One of the main topics on my channel, one of the things that I see the most is people suggesting or yelling at me or making fun of me for not eating meat. And one of the things, a topic that came across uh, my mind to make because of some of the things that I've seen. And actually, interestingly enough, it kind of is in, inspired by <laughs> watching food eating competition people. So I will get to that kind of at the end of the video or maybe in the middle of the video and a whole other, uh, uh, other host of things and something that I went through in my recovery after I had to have my ankle replaced. So five main downsides of low carb diets. No one talks about. Okay. And I am not saying don't hear what I'm not saying. I am not saying that protein is bad, that we don't need protein. Our entire body is made of protein, okay? Our enzymes are made of protein. However, I think people lose sight of the fact that protein is not stored in the body. It is. It builds the body, but it is not stored in the body. And our muscles are built to store glycogen. So let's get started. So then the number five, I'm going to go descending, I guess. So I'm going to start off at five excess uric acid. And I'm going to, I've got some uh, things here that I'm going to put up on screen that you can read. Uh, it's not a ton, but I'm going to put a, a few things up on screen. So excess uric acid, uh, the urea cycle causes, um, in long term, like in long, this is not going to happen overnight, but it can cause arthritis. Now, I don't have that up here, but I know that for sure. This is actually one of the things that I learned back in biology uh, way back in the day. So body does not store uh, excess protein. So, th so they have to be converted into glucose, glycogen, whatever you want to call it. And so when you eat an excess amount of protein, that is going to be converted into glucose and that is a somewhat toxic process which i will talk about at a, a little bit later in this video that can cause a lot of harm to the body so when you're eating a lot of excess protein you get things like i used to get like when i was doing keto carnivore eating a lot of meat some there was some weeks where i literally didn't even eat a vegetable i didn't eat anything <laughs> but meat. And at one point I was eating upwards of 40 ish pounds of meat, eggs, and dairy. And it was fine in the beginning. And see, here's the thing. The, and how long is the beginning for you? It really depends on your liver. The, the beginning for me was for two years. And then all of a sudden everything, everything hit the fan. I had to go to the doctor. It was, it was a hot mess. But one of the things that I suffered from is I started smelling like ammonia. I started smelling like Windex almost, or just like those ammonia caps that you open up before you like do a heavy lift or something like that. It was ridiculous. I was throwing up stomach acid. I didn't know what was causing it. I went to the, to the doctors and they're like, well, we can give you sweat blockers. I'm like, how does that help? How does blocking my sweat help the fact that I smell like ammonia when I do sweat? It doesn't make any sense, right? <clears throat> so that is number five. It's it, There's a lot more things that happen when there's too much excess uric acid in the body, like gout, arthritis, bone, uh, bone issues, just so many things. And there's a reason why, and I'll talk about that in a couple of minutes. So according to the NIH, high dietary protein leads to type two diabetes, right? So everybody blames sugar for to, uh, for for causing diabetes. Would it really isn't true? If you look at the rice diet, the rice diet was rice, uh, fruit, fruit juice, and sugar. Those four things and water. And he cured diabetes a hundred percent of the time. Type, type two diabetes every single time. It was it was like every single time. If you look at McDougal, same thing, same track record. It's when you start adding in fat and that causes the Randall cycle, that is when you start running into diabetes and almost always protein and fat are synergistic. They're usually together. Now, I know the last time I said this in a video, everybody's like, well, they're, they're listening off like, you know, those, these things that, that don't cause it. Of course, there's going to be extenuating circumstances for everything. Okay. But by and large, if we're talking meat here. Normally meat and fat are 
they're they're one in, in the same. So if you're having that with carbohydrates, you're going to cause the Randall cycle. That is going to cause insulin to be in this in the system much longer than it's supposed to be, and that will eventually lead to type two diabetes, and that is what's causing it. So in theory, I guess you could eat like you know. But here's the thing: even if you do eat keto and carnivore, it's saying right here, and I. NIH is saying right here that it leads to type 2 diabetes. So you're not, you're not, I mean, think about the average person that's got diabetes. They're all over here eating KFC and, and all this other terrible stuff and, and fast food and, and they're shooting their insulin wherever they got to shoot their insulin. I think it's the abdomen. They still got type 2 diabetes and they're eating all that protein, right? So that it's not going away. It, you know, even when they do are, are very controlled or even when they do have a carnivore diet or keto diet, they still got diabetes. It hasn't gone away. Now, that I'm sure I'm going to put it out there. I'm sure <laughs> I'm sure there are people who don't have it, right? Who, who don't have diabetes. Uh, but again, NAH said it, you know. Have they said a whole lot of other things that I don't agree with? Yes, but that's what we've got. Number three. So, and the reason I, I'm going, to, so I, I, I started off with protein. I'm going to go into fat just because there's obviously three main macros. There's carbohydrates, there is protein, and there is fat. And so fat breakdown can be toxic, right? And that's, this literally was the verbiage. Visceral fat is also known as toxic fat and visceral fat is the fat that's around the organs of the body. So if you see somebody who is, you know, skinny fat or somebody who's skinny but have like has like a gut, they got a lot of visceral fat in them and that is not good. That's actually worse than having subcutaneous fat, which is as fat as just under the skin. All right, and so toxic fat can also secrete a, a toxic substance it's, it's bad, right? So almost all toxic man-made chemicals are stored in the fat and released when you lose fat. Lipotoxicity. That is that is really a bad thing, right? This is when this is so when you start losing a lot of weight, you can really start having a lot of headaches. You can ha start having a lot of nausea. You can start having a lot of things in the system that you are like, oh, this diet sucks because I've got X. You might get a lot of acne. Uh, just many different things. I, I didn't really want to, I didn't recreate a list because I didn't really think of it. But think of when people start losing weight or when they go on a high carb diet, they start having many, many different things happening. So they'll start having a lot of lethargicness. They'll start having headaches. They'll start getting acne. They'll start getting every kind of symptom known to man. And a lot of the reason for that is because of this. There's a lot of toxins stored in the fat. So when you start losing the fat, then it's going to release the toxins and you're going to feel the effect of that. And if they are so toxic, that can cause other things like the C word, that can cause acne, that can cause just many, many, many different things that, and then people start blaming carbohydrates. And it's not the carbohydrates. It can also raise your triglycerides because you're releasing triglycerides because you're releasing fat. And so people will start blaming the high carb diet for causing triglycerides to be higher in the system because you're losing fat. Like what, what did you expect to have? You can't lose something and not have it in the blood system unless you like have lipo liposuction. All right. So number two. Oh, you know what? No, I'm going to go. So excess amounts of amino acids and fatty acids are considered toxic because they need to be broken down to be released. So that's another part of that process that I was just talking about. So if you're eating a lot of excess protein, that can cause a lot of the same issues that lipotoxicity causes. Causing, and then here's the, one of the worst parts really is causing fatty liver and causing bones to become, uh, you know, broken down or brittle, causing osteoporosis to use the minerals of the bones to neutralize these acids that you've got in the system. You know, I, I think I've got it right here. Like fatty liver is largely caused by acid being in the system and your, your liver is supposed to detox everything out of your system, but it can't do it with this toxic load that it's got from excess protein, excess fat. When it's got excess carbohydrates, it just gets hotter. And that is where I'm going to bring in these 
food competitions. If you watch a lot of food competitions, and I'm not really advising it, but if you want to see, it's very consistent across the board. If these, if it's say it's like a hamburger and fries, they will almost always eat the hamburger first because the fries will cause them to get full real quick. Right. You know, a lot of the times they can't, they can't, if they start off with the fries, they might not actually finish the whole thing. And that's another thing where sugar is good because sugar causes you to get full faster. Think about how much meat you can eat or avocados you can eat. Like I could eat like six or seven avocados easily because they don't trigger my, my hunger system at all. But sh sugar does like, I just had half a water or a quarter of a watermelon. I couldn't eat anything else. It triggers it. Think about what back when you were a kid, you, you know, if your mother or whoever made dessert or she bought dessert or he, but whatever they bought dessert and you wanted dessert more than you wanted the dinner because it's got sugar in it. Right. But the, your parents are, are going to be like, no, 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 no. You got to eat your dinner first because why? Because it will spoil your appetite because you ate a lot of carbohydrates. They trigger the satiety. Uh, you know, protein and fat does not trigger the satiety until you are so far over. It's not even funny, which is why I was able to eat 40, sometimes 50 pounds of meat, dairy and eggs a week because it doesn't really trigger satiety. A, it doesn't really have sugar in it and it doesn't have fiber in it either. So those are the two things that trigger satiety. So if you really look and one of the things that these these uh, food competition people will talk about is how hot they get when they get they eat carbohydrates. So if you eat so if you've eaten, I don't know, 10 or five or six pounds of meat and then you start adding all the carbohydrates to it, your body's like, I've got way more than I need. I'm going to increase the heat, but you're going to increase the heat, whether you just eat carbohydrates by themselves or if they're added to something else. But not only are you triggering the Randall cycle with eating meat and carbohydrates together, if it's in a certain ratio, I think it's anything, there's like a 30, 30, 70%. So I, I forget what the, the percentage is. Once you go over a certain amount of fat to carbohydrates, that will start triggering the Randall cycle. And what the Randall cycle is, because I've mentioned it several times, is if you have a lot of fat in the system, the fat will coat the, the cell walls and it won't allow carbo the glucose to get into the cell wall because it's blocked, it's greased up. And so your body's just going to keep releasing insulin until it finally gets the carbohydrates in the cell because you're only supposed to have, I think it's like five grams or something like that, of, of glucose in your blood system at any given time. So it's going to keep doing that. And while it does that, when insulin's in the system, you can't burn fat. So if you are constantly in this Randall cycle, this is what eventually leads to type 2 diabetes. And this is what leads to being overweight. That's why McDougal program, the rice diet, all these other high carb, high carb, low fat things, they will eventually cause you to lose weight. Now, I know I haven't, I've lost 175 pounds. I have run into dips and, and things just because I eventually can't stand eating and I stop eating. So I, I, I do run into issues with that. But back to the food people, go watch these people. Go watch them. They'll talk about how hot they are or how like they can't get the fries down because it triggers the satiety thing. They don't talk about that, but they'll talk about how much they hate that they're, there's, you know, French fries or chips or whatever you want to call them in the food competition because it's hard to eat. It's not hard to eat like seven pounds of, of meat. I, I could, I still to this day, I guarantee I could go to a restaurant, get seven pounds of meat, polish it off like that. And number one, Every single cell in the body, the mitochondria of the cell, runs off of glucose. Glucose. It doesn't run off nitrogen, which is protein. It doesn't run off uh, lipids, which is fat. It runs off glucose. So if you're eating a high or a low carb you, and you're going to be eating excess of fat and protein, it's going to be turning it into uh, glucose anyways. It's going to spike your insulin. And it's going to cause type 2 diabetes and you're going to get overweight and it's not going to cause a satiety. And Dennis Burkett, one of the things that he talked about was if you don't have a lot of fiber in your diet, that is what leads to the C word. That's what leads to a, a, almost every disease because you don't have fiber. You don't have the broom in your system to get everything out. 
And one of the main things that you see when you have low carb diet and a high fat, high protein, or whichever one you want to really choose is the colon gets backed up and everybody's like, well, no, 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 but it, but it does because I've been there and it is an awful thing. And so it just gets backed up, backed up, backed up, backed up. And that's where this ease comes into play. Uh, people brag about their constipation or how the fact that they only go to number two, like one or two, three times a week. I'm like, that is not supposed to happen <laughs> at all. And uh, another thing that I wanted to add here is the brain, while only 2% of most people's body weight, uses 20% of all your energy. And that is one of the last things that I wanted to talk about is because I see people who have a lot of protein and fat, their memory starts to go, they, they, they don't, they can't process things very well. Now there is this euphoria and I've been there. There's this euphoria, you're running off cortisol. You are real quick and you can really think really quickly uh, with everything, but that's only because your body wants sugar and is trying to keep you awake, which eventually happens. When I was on keto, I couldn't sleep hardly at all. I couldn't figure out why, because I didn't look into this. So when I was on keto, I could hardly sleep at all. And then I figured out eventually, uh, you know, 10 years later, that it was because of the lack of carbohydrates in the diet. And it's just, it's a hot mess. So you, you see these people and they're, they're floating through life. They, they, they just, they're, they're just minions. So you've got, you've got people who are terrified to be out in the sun, you know, screwing them up. Vitamin D runs almost uh, so many processes in the body. And then you put sunscreen on, which blocks the vitamin D from getting in. You've got uh, too much protein in the system. It, it's, and that's causing so much toxic overload. And one of the last things I probably should have talked about this in the beginning of the video. I actually shot this video once already, but the audio is terrible. There is a study that was a study at Harvard by this guy who got in a car accident, just like all the other doctors who talk against protein. And there was a study, there's a study that Furman uses. So the study that Furman uses is they studied rats mice and I think humans and a lot of fasting and, and not eating much. And it showed lo longevity in these animals and, and humans. I, th I think there might've been humans, but they, uh, they had longevity in life, but they had miserable lives. They never wanted to do anything. They just, it was just depressing. They were basically just existing. And then this doctor came about, I made a video about it. If I can find it, I'll uh, link it here. But there was another doctor that came around and he was talking about the fact that it really wasn't the fasting, it was the lack of protein. And he actually proved this. So he did his own study where he had these animals and humans on a high carb, low fat diet, and they actually had better results than the fasting and the starving themselves. And they had better lives and they did what they wanted to do. So, it, and it really, <clears throat> He couldn't figure out the fat part. He couldn't figure out if, if, if the fat really affected it that much. But he did notice that when there was a lack of protein, it had the exact same longevity as when these animals and I think humans were starving themselves. So that is all that I have here. This is the five. I'm sure the keto carnivore crew are going to come on here and just tell you to go eat meat because they're their brains don't function anymore because the brain functions uses 20% of the energy of your body and they don't have it. So they're running off cortisol and that just turns you into caveman mode and it doesn't allow you to have any coherent thoughts because I've been there. I understand it. And that is the video. Any comments, questions down below, like subscribe and, uh, if this video will help somebody out that you know, share it with them. And yeah, that's it. Uh, it's It's been a long journey and everybody's like, well, you've been on this for 14 years. I lost 175 pounds and you know, it's been, it's, you know, I know it probably should have happened faster, but it didn't. Here we are. Anyway, that's the video. Talk to you in the next one. Peace.